Greetings, welcome to Facts About Everything, I'm your host James Egan. Because the live action Lion King movie's coming out, I mean technically it's not live action because all of it is animated, I decided to look at the original Disney classic, The Lion King. Did you ever wonder why there's no human beings in this movie? According to the director, this film takes place about a hundred thousand years ago, before human civilization existed. And that is the first fact about The Lion King. Let's dive in. This film was made by Disney Team B. This was supposed to be the filler Disney film, while the superior Team A was making what they believed to be the greatest Disney film ever, Pocahontas. Ironically, Pocahontas bombed, and The Lion King is considered to be the greatest Disney film ever made. Can You Feel the Love Tonight was meant to be sung by Timon and Pumbaa. A lot of people have joked about the villain's name. His name is Scar, and he has a scar? What are the odds of that? But in the original backstory, Mufasa accidentally cut his brother's face while they were young, which left him with the nickname Scar. His real name is unknown. The director, Rob Minkoff, stood in for Mufasa before James Earl Jones recorded his lines. The crew said Minkoff does an incredible impression of Jones. James Earl Jones has the best voice ever, so I would love to see that. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Simba's parents are played by James Earl Jones and Madge Sinclair. They played a married couple in the film Coming to America. Although Nala's mother's name is never mentioned, it's Sarafina. Six hundred artists worked on the movie. It's common knowledge that a lot of the story is taken from William Shakespeare's Hamlet, but that's not the only story that inspired this movie. The Lion King is also based off an ancient Egyptian story of Osiris. Osiris was killed by his evil brother Seth, Osiris's son, Horus, exiles himself until his father's ghost beckons him to return and exact revenge on Set. This story is also similar to a Niger Congo tale about a king called Sundiata, which means Lion King, who was banished from his home after his father died. He eventually returns and battles the evil wizard king who has taken over his former home. Nathan Lane voices Timon. The role was offered to Joe Pesky. Jeremy Irons voices Scar. Tim Curry and Malcolm McDowell were considered for the role. The film's original title was King of the Jungle. The title was changed when the writers realized that lions don't live in jungles. Rowan Atkinson voices Zazu. Patrick Stewart was considered for the role. Many characters were cut from the original script, including a rhino, a bat-eared fox called Batty, Nala's brother Mitu, a meerkat besides Tumun, and a rock python called Joka. The first scene was supposed to include narration that explained who each of the main characters are. The translation of The Circle of Life is... Here comes a lion, father. Oh yes, it's a lion. Here comes a lion. Oh yes, it's a lion. A lion we're going to conquer. A lion, a lion, and a leopard come to this open place. What's the leopard got to do anything? Is there a leopard in this movie? Oh yeah, that guy. But he doesn't do anything. I'm confused. Rafiki's song translates into, Thank you very much, Squash Banana. You are a baboon, and I am not. In the original draft, Scar was simply an evil lion and wasn't related to Mufasa. Zazu's name is misspelled as Zasu in the credits. To animate the hyenas marching, the crew watch footage of Nazis goose-stepping. In the film, lions are graceful, powerful animals and hyenas are mindless scavengers. Ironically, it's almost the opposite in real life. Hyenas are ferocious and very intelligent. They're actually the smartest animal on Earth apart from humans and dolphins. They're even smarter than chimpanzees. Lions, on the other hand, scavenge the animals the hyenas kill. There are anteaters in the I can't wait to be king scene, even though the animals animals don't live in Africa, making this movie about talking lions incredibly inaccurate. A song called The Morning Report was completed but left out. It was reinserted into the film when it was released on DVD. <laughs> this song is really bad. Jeffrey Katzenberg was the chairman of Walt Disney Studios from 1984 to 1994. This was the last film supervised by Jeffrey Katzenberg before he created Disney's competitor, DreamWorks. Mufasa was not supposed to return as a ghost. Scar's face is based on Jeremy Irons' face. The creators of the film loved the Circle of Life intro so much, they used it as the trailer for the movie. This was the first time that Disney used a complete scene for a movie trailer. Sean Connery wanted to voice Mufasa. Disney animators ventured to Africa to study how animals interact with each other. Most of the characters' names are Swahili words. Simba means lion, Sarabi means mirage, Rafiki means friend, Pumba means simpleton, Shenzi means barbarian, Bonsai means skulk. When Timon is eating bugs, one of the insects in the background has Mickey Mouse ears. Scar's claws are never retracted at any point. The stampede scene took three years to animate. And if you think that's a long time, this single shot of the camera zooming in on Simba's face 
took one year to animate. Ernie Sabala voices Pumbaa and Nathan Lane voices Timon. Both of them auditioned for hyenas. In the original script, Timon and Pumbaa were friends with Simba from the very beginning. This film has the highest rating on IMDb of any Disney film that was not made by Pixar. In an early draft, Scar was going to kill Simba. Scar would say, good night, sweet prince, before throwing Simba into the fiery pit. This quote is from Hamlet, which is one of the main inspirations for the movie. Matthew Broderick played Simba as an adult. Nathan Lane played Timon. They only met once during the film's entire production. Yeah, they probably couldn't meet, probably because Matthew Broderick was too busy killing people. That's not a joke. He actually did. Originally, Rafiki was meant to be a cheetah. Scar was meant to be an evil baboon or a jackal. A lion and a cub were brought into the studio so the animators could study their muscle structure. This is the most successful VHS film of all time. Do millennials know what a VHS is? It's like after beta, before DVD, it doesn't matter. Pumba regularly rubs his belly. The animator decided to incorporate this into the film after watching his pregnant wife do the same thing. You base the warthog off your pregnant wife. I mean, that's just... That's just the gold standard of marriage, isn't it? When Mufasa tells Simba about the great kings of the past, one of the star alignments is of Mickey Mouse. This was the most successful film of the year, apart from Jurassic Park. The film only cost $45 million, but went on to make over $900 million at the box office, making it the most successful animated film ever. It held onto this record until Frozen. However, The Lion King is still the most successful hand-drawn animated film. This was the first Disney cartoon to be dubbed in Zulu. Although Rafiki is supposed to be a mandrill, he has a tail, which mandrills lack. When Mufasa and Simba talk about the stars, the constellation for Leo is clearly visible. Leo represents the lion. Simba's mother, Sarabi, was supposed to sing a song called The Lion in the Moon, but it was cut. Hakuna Matata wasn't in the original script. The stampede was so difficult to animate the creators had to write a new program to control the Will of Beast movements. The film won two Oscars. Elton John won an Oscar for Best Original Song, and Hans Zimmer won for Best Original Score. Simba's Mane is based on John Bon Jovi's hair. There are 15 versions of Can You Feel the Love Tonight. The film inspired the Broadway musical which opened in 1997. It won six Tony Awards, including Best Musical. My wife got me tickets to see that on my 30th birthday, and it was spectacular. Spectacular. None of the lion roars were from actual lions. Frank Welker provided all the lion roars himself. In 1994, Disney made over a billion dollars from Lion King merchandise. An earthquake occurred near Walt Disney Studios in 1994, which forced the animators to complete their drawings at home. The film inspired a sequel in 1998 called The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Since The Lion King is based on Hamlet, the creators of the sequel decide to maintain the Shakespeare motif and base the sequel story on Romeo and Juliet, because that's what the kids want Shakespeare references, yeah. The film inspired a sequel, prequel, sidequel called The Lion King One and a Half, which revolves around Timon and Pumbaa before, during, and after the events in The Lion King. It is based on the play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, who are Shakespeare characters, and who, who cares? The film inspired an animated series called Timon and Pumbaa, which ran for five seasons. The gopher was supposed to be a naked mole rat, but the artist couldn't draw it properly. That's because it's the most revolting looking animal ever. I mean, look at it, who wants to see that in a cartoon? During the song, Be Prepared, Jeremy Irons roars, you won't get a sniff without me. He strained his throat so much when he said the line that he lost his voice and couldn't continue the song. The rest of the song is sung by Jim Cummings. The transition is so seamless, it's impossible to notice. You won't get a sniff without me! So for the cool of the century! Only three Disney films have ever won a Golden Globe for Best Picture. This, Toy Story 2, and Beauty and the Beast. And finally, you knew this was coming. Everyone has pointed out that The Lion King is suspiciously similar to the anime Kimba the White Lion. They even made a joke of it in The Simpsons. You must avenge my death, Kimba. I mean... Simba. Disney Studios have stated that Walt Disney didn't even know of Kimba the White Lion. However, Walt Disney wanted to adapt Astro Boy before he died, which was written by Osama Tezuka, who also created Kimba the White Lion. Since Walt was very familiar with Tezuka's work, he must have known about Kimba the White Lion. Disney Studios say the similarities between the two movies are coincidental. Oh yeah, coincidence. The films have nothing in common, apart from the scene where Kimba's father shows him the kingdom is his, and he appears as a cloud, and the animals raise Kimba and his love interest in the air, and he's friends with a mandrel, and after his father dies, Kimba gets lost, and his father's ghost appears in the sky, which inspires him to go back home, but his home has been taken over by an evil lion with hyena henchmen that serve as comedic relief, much like the uptight scaredy cat bird, Apart from that, they got nothing in common. That movie and this movie are so similar, 
that Matthew Broderick, who plays Simba the Lion King, thought that this was a remake. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe. Please let me know if there's any other Disney films you want me to do a video about, and I'll upload it as soon as possible. To learn more facts, check out my books. They're available on Amazon, on paperback, and Kindle. Thanks for watching. See you again.